Good morning, brother. Beautiful, beautiful. Will, will be, will be safe, brother. Cool. No vibes. Thanks. Raja chief. Get in. Raja then. Cool then. A good, great morning to all who are tuned into the realest thing coming out of Guyana. Here I had to take a rest last night and even now I'm feeling bogged down in my head. Like there's so much going on. What's going on, Guyana? I miss you guys. I miss you guys last night. But I went to watch a little Harry Potter. Here now, watch a couple episodes of Harry Potter. And when I done, <laughs> like I said, bye. There's some real shit here. The white man really got twisted mine. <laughs> here. Uh, it's a woman who, who wrote the, the, the Harry Potter stories, right? And it's amazing because it's like she mine is the craziest, most Looney Tune kind of dream ever. You got, you got to respect genius. And I think that's some of the problems we as Guyanese have. We don't respect genius when we see it. We don't respect things in general. You understand? Respect, pay respect. To your brother and your sister when they're doing well. If you look at Harry Potter, it's, 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 Harry Potter came from books that are, um, they're movies fashioned off of books that a woman wrote. So you sit down and think. And you think about the words that they're using. Right? You think about the characters, how they were made up. You think about all the, the, the script. You got, got one Looney Tune mind. You got to be American. The Americans think of Harry Potter, they think of the um, aliens, nobody. You got to respect the Americans. People like Pompey, you got to watch them and got respect for them. Because nobody, since the beginning of time, has been able to think about so much of bullshit constantly. You understand? It's like they ooze bullshit. Like aliens and, you understand? And predators and Harry Potter. I looking at Harry Potter and I, I tell you, when I done and I reach at the end, I said, bye, you just consume a whole load of bullshit because it takes you, it's, it's nice to go in the realm to disassociate yourself. Morning, brother. Good morning. Hey, are you already? My brother. Talk to me. Like the program this morning, you had Mr. Uh, Minister Frank Anthony and yourself about the COVID. Yeah, yeah. Um, you still have to deal with the people who is still open the from shop through Guyana over. Is that following the COVID 19? They're not very serious of concern. But this morning. So press concern with them this year. This morning. Yes. We got, I'm going to be talking about done. I'm going to be talking about the double standards as it results in the enforcement of COVID-19. Thank you, thank you. Safe, brother, cool. Yeah. So I'm telling you, you gotta respect the Americans. Them Bano could think up some shit. You understand? Well, I mean European people. White people. It was a British writer. Somebody said she's a British writer. Right? That lady could think up some shit. Like the Banner the Fuck Bulls and Harry Potter himself. <laughs> Harry Potter is like a geek. The freak can't do shit. <laughs> you understand? Know we got some, we got some little terrorists here. Would rob Harry Potter, you want? Shove it up your ass. And there's the end of he. And you got the Dark Lord trying to get Harry Potter on half the Dark Lord in Harry Potter. Yes, sir. If this shit in Guy, since Harry Potter was a little child, he had half of the Dark Lord in Guy, and you got snakes rolling, you got giants, you got midgets, you got real shit going on in Harry Potter. Then they ain't done it. These manners are staying on the ground. These manners start flying. They got little balls flying. Yes, sir. I'm glad if me balls gonna fly, cause even today, like hanging. So yes, and next thing, imagine me balls trying to fly, and I dead so. Leaning back at me balls flying by itself, carry me God in heaven knows where. <laughs> yes, that. 
And the funny thing is, it's captivating. I'm there. I watched what five episodes of Harry Potter, five of the movie last night. And when I thought, I said, huh? There's too much bullshit for um, consuming one day by. I said, so pang, 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 knock out the head. Yeah, as I said, catch your sleep, catch your rest, and get back yourself. You walk in a while, drop it, come out somewhere else. You flush down in the toilet and come out somewhere else. Yeah, you know I said, it's like not only bullshit in theoretical sense, it's bullshit in practical sense. If you could flush yourself down in the toilet, and you want to know why the world is a confused place. <laughs> when does were you thinking, you know, do you find solace in? And, and programming your mind as a little child. You know, like, amazing, yes, I'm half flush with the toilet. And there you have, you know, how them tenants kill the landlord and put him in a septic tank. <laughs> you ever heard the story with the tenants kill the landlord and push in the septic tank? <laughs> and everybody's like, oh my God. Oh my God. The happening the you know? Why are you so vicious? Why are you so dangerous? Hey, you know? Needs to go past story come up again. <laughs> Needs to go past story come up again. Whereas the mother and she love her appeal the court case and then get a fair matter. Needs to go past body was found in a creek and in a suitcase. And everybody's like, oh, oh, this criminal. <laughs> you never see Harry Potter. <laughs> I said the shit that's come out of suitcase. And Harry Potter, a suitcase, a girl got a bag. Harry Potter girl, the, the, the friend girl, got a bag and pushing it. And clothes coming out, tent coming out, they come. you could go in the bag and chill out. The bag might get a village inside it. You understand? So when you watch Harry Potter, you know here, the world that surrounds Harry Potter, we get torn up and set the freaks. <laughs> when I done watching, I said, I come back to reality. Come back to reality. If Harry Potter running to one of we done stubs, <laughs> they were thief the one and don't even know what it is. <laughs> he don't know what's going on. You could fly. How you go fly when they thief you, bro? How you doing? <laughs> Magic! Magic ain't got nothing for chain snatchers. Somebody say, Na Potter. Na Potter. Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> Me say Potter. Because they got no Harry Potter in here. <laughs> Them Harry Potter, they don't work nothing. <laughs> yes, sir. Nobody want them. They go all about the place. And when the people done with the Harry Potter, them, it become like a platypus. <laughs> the Guyanese critic said, not Harry Potter. I said, Harry Potter. <laughs> because I got no foreign party. <laughs> yeah, you know I said, and you know, when I watch this thing, I say, here, when I talk about this thing in the mind, I got pissed off all them fans. Like, when they put Harry Potter got some serious um, fans. That's. <laughs> you know, this country got enough magic, but. Harry Potter, I said. Not Potter, Harry Potter. Is it, you know him as Harry Potter? <laughs> yeah, come on, Guyana. Let me show you magic. Yeah, I said. <laughs> you imagine. You imagine. <laughs> you imagine Harry got something finding with these things missing. They're looking for some chains, right? Something with some power inside and they can break, destroying them. And man, a thief hold out car and guy and the police force can't find him back. The I'll deal sign out by one minister. Nobody know but nothing. <laughs> Harry bad for this life. Harry Potter. 
This is supposed to be Harry Potter country as, as, as far as they're concerned. You understand? Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter, Mr. Saman. You tell a guy in his critic tell you. You got a lie like story with him. You piss off the fans. Let them come in. Let me show them magic. If they feel like a run up in my face with a magic one. Magic one? Me got two by four. Last year, two by four. If you play, chop it. <laughs> magic one. Zap. Zap. Eh? I pull out one of them electric wire. Push the eye. Then you know zap zap zap. This is one zap and that one zap back and that kind of thing. You understand? Me got no one. I got two by four. Lash your head with two by four. This is always do it up in here. Now. Lash your head with two by four. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> well, here you what for part of the story. When I now go come and tap a hurry, but after what? You know, I engrossed. And when I decide this is my this, is when I don't get tired of my sleep. Because I watch one, I watch two, and I follow, and then I ask Paul if he's following them in succession for make sure we follow up with the story. <laughs> when I done with the story, you understand? I realize here there's enough bullshit for consuming one day. That could confuse the poor man's mind. You understand? Next thing, they hustle him and get a cup out of a place. With a set of gold, when you touch the cup, gold is gone. You make a joke. You never hear about Aurora mining. You never hear about Aurora mining. You never hear about a Chinese company. We buy out a mining place. We mining for gold. People is dead trying to get gold in this country. And Harry Potter touching thing and, and hustling for get something else and the gold growing and hanging out there. Guys, can't go in Harry Potter show. We will forget about the whole purpose of life and, and destiny and to save the world. Anytime we go in a room with gold cups, and see, everything the man touch it, turn into a certain thing. I say, eh. And they forget about all the gold. While Aurora mining, they don't in Guyana try to carry away with gold for building them gold cups we used to see in the Harry Potter movie. You making joke. I see that. I see that. Stop, 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 stop. Stop, hey. Stop right here! People flying all about the place, it's gotta set a land. I say, wait, 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 wait. We need this at housing. Palace. You know, the man blow up a whole palace. And a lady message me some artist to get one some zinc for Miller House. You know? I just wish this. It's for truth, it's the same world, Harry Potter there in. Where we try to build house, and they do it magic. And they don't pay no attention to gold. And the man trying to brought some diamond. Listen to me. I went into my Looney Tunes scene. I watched a couple of things and, and a sale sale. Yes, eh? and then I realized, yo. Catch yourself, boy. Wake up. Guyana, they ain't turmoil. People protesting in Linden. Who are raised to pay? And we gotta make a comparison between the protesters, the nurses, frontline nurses, who protesting, and the ministers, them $95 million vehicle. Now I know frontline workers were allocated a sum. I know how much of them. Yeah, I said. I know how much of them. But I know if it was an attempt to embarrass the government or it is genuine, because I'm looking at the area. How you just got this sporadic jump up area? I know Region 10 is a hot spot. I talked to the Minister of Health yesterday morning. I know Region 4 is a hot spot. I ain't hear from nobody in Region 4. Right? Yet. I know there's some budget allocation for um, frontline workers. Then I hear frontline workers protesting. Now I came across something that I took a picture with 50% pay increase. For um, civil servants, the public sector, right? So I want for no. I want for no. I ain't hear nothing but in the budget. I'm glad for no. I talk to one of the minister and find out what is going on with the sector. Why it ain't forthcoming? Because we got things going on. I hear the plan for paint over um, state house. We could left state house for now. We could 
left for and one things for the back. Because that thing, the pain can last about two more years. We're going to do a repaint soon, in two years. Left state house. State house is not an emergency. Let me left state house and let me allocate some money for we people. Not based on exactly the need. We got to do an assessment and make sure there is the need. Yes, sir. But we need to at least seem we care more about we people than the aesthetics of state house. Right? If you get my message, we need to at least seem that we care more about our frontline workers, our staff, our the people who serve us, who are working every day tirelessly. We need to seem like we, even if it seems so. So I advise the administration, what would look nice? Is if we say, well, we put up thing, but remember we just make him budget and we ask for people input. Put state house on a pass. Because they're hurting nobody. I don't like the green neither. But here, it is paint. It is on there. It was well done. To the tune of millions of taxpayers' dollars. We all don't do it. I don't going to paint over the house. You tell people how the house state house look bad at the green. But you don't tell people how much money comes out of their pocket. That's where you got to start telling the citizens. When you come up with these bright ideas to spend citizen money, let them know that you tax them to do so. And then you're going to hear how they want to do it. You tell people how and where the money comes from. You know what, the citizens? Nobody will catch yourself that it comes out of their pocket. Put, make the correlation between taxes and spending. And here laugh. Nobody might want to do nothing in this country anymore. Yes, sir? So let me put, I would look at that. I'm asking our president. Look at that. Say here. Let me put up on hold. We got two more years. Look at the lifetime of the paint. You understand? Even if it seems we create the, the, in, the, the impression that we care. Because what is care? Simply like people say, you don't take a picture when you help people, but they don't help nobody. And they don't take a no picture. I take a picture when I help people. I want a record of it. I want the world to know and I want others to help. So, Mr. President, there's nothing wrong. It's human. We all make mistakes. Everybody put in. Let me paint. Let me do this. Let me do that. Everybody put in. We make up a budget. We bring art. We see all in a hurry. As we look at it, we realize mistakes were made. Yeah, I said. So, let me say here. No, nothing like giving people the impression that you're taking from yourself to give to them. It's not a pool that you take and me take and I'll be taking. If you turn, if you turn and say, well, here, let me take state house money. Put it. And frontline workers get money. I don't know if they can get it fast enough, but I, I did hear that frontline workers get money allocated for them. So when you watch it, civil protesters, you got asked yourself, where's the motive? Who send them? If you have genuine concerns, because again, the frontline workers that protested at Linden, they're frontline workers across Guyana. They are frontline workers across Guyana. There are people at New Amsterdam, there are people at Charity, there are people at Sudi, there are people at Georgetown Hospital, there are people at, at, at the Lenora Cottage Hospital. There are people at Weld, um, Weld Dad, is Weld Dad the place name? All over Guyana has frontline workers. S um, Skeldon, there are frontline workers across Guyana. So you ask, who send them in Linden? Now, I'm not saying Lindeners, frontline workers don't have a genuine concern. All frontline workers have a genuine concern. And I'm thanking you for your hard work and dedication in keeping us, the citizenry, alive. But I don't know what's the motive. Just like I didn't know what was the motive of the West Barbie situation. You understand? This thing's popping up. And that is what you have to be aware of. I am saying, if you got a genuine plausible concern and an issue because I know frontline workers get money I know how this protest come about 
who arrange it and what is the intent. And you gotta remember where you're going out there. You have the right to protest. This is the first thing. You have the right to protest. So if you don't protest, we don't know what is the issue. Your, your issue might not come to the forefront. Hi, Dr. Kisun. Morning. Talk to me. difference between So the Lindeners, the, the Linden, the who thing yesterday, who protested uh -huh. yesterday, they are not frontline workers. They are healthcare people. Yes. That their yes. own frontline workers. Also have a protest in Region Four also. No, and but their interests. Um, their management stopped it by allocating them fifteen thousand dollars per shift when working in COVID. That's why they're not protesting here. But right now, the rest of staff around the country are talking about it because they feel that nothing is being done for them. What do you think is a worthy a risk assessment allowance? What do you think is... That would have to be calculated based on the hours they work and which department they work in. So I cannot generalize it to one figure. That, that wouldn't be right. So you, for as as presidential candidate for the TNM, and um, one of the members of the tripartite joiner, which is in opposition presently, has a seat in parliament. You are in support of the request for a risk assessment allowance. One hundred percent in support. And, and let me state for the record mm -hmm. that the pay. Great for all healthcare professionals, police officers, teachers, public servants in general in Ghana are a big mall. And this is a perfect opportunity for the government to show their people that they care about them. In COVID-19, with the extra strain and pressure on jobs, families, home lives, and basically that the public servants' lives are at risk. The government should do something. You are aware. You are aware, Asha. Simply to show them that they care. This is a golden opportunity for them to stand up to their people. Dr. Kisun, you are aware that there are financial aspects that have to be considered because money has to come from somewhere. But we are talking about a risk assessment that would really live out just the tenure or... or just the time of COVID-19 we're talking about. Yes, definitely. Okay. All right. I will I will make proposals. And it is public right. knowledge now. You're welcome. So that was Dr. Asha Kisun, presidential candidate for the TNM. And um, one of the members of the, the, the tripartite joined, I can tell you, she is being represented in parliament by uh, Lennox Schumann presidential candidate and leader for uh, the Liberty and Justice Party, right? So, um, and she's a doctor. She works at the Sophia Health Center. So she knows firsthand what is going on and when it's going on. So risk assessment we're talking about. We'll talk to the minister very soon. We'll look at what risk assessment. I'll ask him the question. Straight up, right? Risk assessment is it. So we got to be honest. Because you want the help. You want to live. You want to survive. But what are we doing for the people who are risking their lives for us? Right? We got to do an assessment. We got to do things. We got to do things. So we, we weigh in. Compared to giving our people a little more or the lavish fancy thing. Like the vehicles them. I ain't nobody vehicle. We don't got vehicle. We open up. Show care. We care. It's four months. It's a four month budget. Let me care more about myself. Than the aesthetics of what we're going on. Let me care about fighting this COVID-19 and getting this thing over with. 
Let me care more about unity. And again, we got the um, from 8 to um, 10 on Saturday night, the Ministry of Youth Sport, uh, Sports and Culture is doing. Let me tell you what it is. So the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture is holding a virtual concert. And I'm going to be sharing it live on my page on Saturday night. I ain't doing nothing. This is about unity and togetherness, right? One Guyana. So look out for the virtual concert from 8 to 10 on Saturday night. It's the 26th of this month. Hey, what I tell you? We got to get Jackie Jacket. I go... And I see people, when I go into Linden, there are people that they stop. No, you imagine you're interacting with everybody. Right? Aziz Majid, we talking about money for we people. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning, brother. Uh, why these people never used to protest when was in the other previous government? Yes, because that is how it works. You protest when you are dissatisfied with what someone has done. Obviously, you have 217,000 people ready to protest now because they're on the other side of the lane. Likewise, PPP people used to be protesting when um, the PNC was in government. Yes, that's how it works. You don't ask why. Let me stop. Because people ask me where I've been. I've been whoring and drinking and sporting and I decided to change my life and after 2015 being dissatisfied with a government that lied to people, I decided I can come and be outspoken. Everybody said, like, where you been in PPP time? I was busy drinking and sporting and doing all the shit that the, 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 the PNC government come and convince me is wrong. Corruption is wrong and all that. I changed my life. Supported them to come and find out them as thieves like the people them, they complain to me about. You know what I'm People only got a few days no, listen to me. This thing no work. So here, the people, they have the right to protest. Yeah. Are they right about yeah. what they're protesting for? That's a different story. You hear what I tell you? If you have a grievance and you're not getting across, right? Yeah. You protest. You have that right. Everyone. So don't we make it the thing on the side and there's and it's been all the time that way. Yeah, but in the previous they never did nothing to the front line workers as well. My brother, nonetheless, everybody was promised by this administration to be served. The president of this country stands and says very often that he is for all Guyanese. And that is no excuse. For falling back by suggesting, oh, the previous government didn't do anything for them. You understand? If you're doing that with your family, there's you business. And I'm telling you, it's not a good formula. Right? Safe, brother. This is the same thing will make them the outer government. You know why they're protesting? Hello, good morning. Disrespectful to the um the health workers, right? But well, what I'm looking at, they're asking for something extra. Right? What I'm looking at is all the workers are at risk for the COVID-19, even to the bank tellers, because the bank tellers do not go out. Nobody can access their funds for business. So across the board, all workers are at risk. If you're gonna give, I'm not downgrading health workers, but they are better protected than anybody else, any other worker is, because they have protective gear. The bank tellers do not. The ordinary regular sweepers, the ministry officials, none of the, I mean, none of the little people are working in the ministry. Nobody has protection of the COVID, and we at the same time are dealing with the public. So if you're going to do something, consider all workers are right across the board. What you high guys have to consider, and you don't consider, you guys constantly speak Guyanese constantly speak like money falls from the sky. You have to consider every time you ask for something, you are indebting yourself or generations to come. Where will it come from? Now, what we're talking about 
is a risk allowance for COVID-19 period for specific people. That is what I'm talking about. To all workers are at a risk critic. Every last one of us are at a risk. Every last worker in Guyana is at a risk, even if it's a store you're going at, it's at a risk. Well, is that workers as Guyanese? Work. This is a pandemic. It affects us all. Hello? Yes, this is air. You gotta do the stats. I, I hear you. You have to do the stats to be able to say we're all at risk. You have the opportunity to practice social distancing. You have the opportunity to do everything. They don't have that. They have to come into contact with people. Like, I come close to you for thing the gun. They got to check your pressure. So we got to decide what we're doing and when we're doing it. As I said before, no offense, we know that they're at the greater... No, I get your point. I, I, every point noted. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning, Chris. Talk to me, brother. Uh, I'm calling from Parsi, and I'm here. They robbed last night, me and my family. I'd like you to come over. I will be, yeah, I can, I can come over here. Give me a call. Give me a call little after lunch. You can see my live. Um, I'm going to do something that's going to be covering the estates. I'm going to be doing a live. And after that, I'll come to you, brother. All right, good, good. Are everybody safe? Yeah, man. If it's not, I get some cut in my head and start lash up with one and that's it. I'm just glad you're safe, brother. I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there today. All right, good. Hello? I gotta hit the road, man. I am just so tired. I gotta hit the road. Oh my god. Let me hit the road, guys. Let me hit the road. I am tired. I am tired. Can we wake up a day and and we can get robbed? Yes, so much work to do. Can it end? Can it end? Hmm. Open up there for that then. Danny slept here last night. He's still here? Okay, make sure you get breakfast and stuff for him. Right? Huh? You wake up in the morning and buy Chinese, do something with the biscuit. I don't buy the biscuit. I don't eat biscuit. Don't See what is in the fridge and hot up something for breakfast and, and use milk. Yeah. Yes, lunchtime, yes. You're going to, Paul gonna take care of your lunch. like Harry Potter. This is what you want to do. I'm just so tired. Hello, good morning. Hello. Talk to me, brother. Hey, you, we got to be careful with when you're classifying workers. With the COVID-19, you got frontline workers, people that are in direct contact with known carriers. Those people are in a special group, all right? Mm -hmm. You have to use precaution. So, yes, everybody needs a little something, but there should be a little extra. Like they do all Frontline over. workers here. Frontline workers have already been taken care of. But here was the funny thing. You have to remember the new COVID-19 hospital that's been built. It's not the primary place. Um, what's that? 
What? Pull from a drone. What is that? Oh, no, no, that is talking to myself. Yeah. Now, the COVID-19 hospital is not the primary place for um, COVID-19 persons. COVID-19 is across this country, effectively across this country. So you have a ward in Georgetown Hospital that dealing with COVID-19. But the person who dealing with COVID-19, where they walk through for reach to the ward. You understand? Once I'm in the parameter body, I'm affected. Once I'm in the parameters of this thing, I'm affected. So we gotta look at that, yes, but I know government allocated monies for frontline workers. Yeah, yeah, John, I explain it to you. Well, let me not take the more cars, no rest. Yeah. So. I got go, I got I, I go into town for So we we going by the estate thing. I definitely the, the estate thing to find out what is going on. You don't know what's going on. Soon I'm going to Barbie to the estates to find out what is going on. Um we will wait for walk the estate workers, you know. So this morning we're gonna be talking to people today who will help me in a better understanding of what's gonna be going on in the estates and when we get the sugar workers back to work, right? When we get the sugar workers back to work. That's what everybody wants to know right now. You see, there are a lot of spin-off from the estates. The spin-off is, um, is, um, like the markets are gonna be, Developing an LM thing now, you know what I'm saying? Shops gonna be doing more. Once money circulating, buddy, communities are going to be kicking in. I even want to have the rum shops because they got some things I even want to hear about. But I can't, I can't, you can't vex with people. I change me life and me stop drinking because I used to be all about drinking the rum too. And I change me life and start drinking the rum and next time I want all the rum shop closed down. Nah, they don't work like that. Because I used to enjoy myself and I used to have media. And if there's your enjoyment, you understand? It's a, it's a capitalist society. You got the right, you got the freedom to do whatever you want to do. You understand? Once it is, it, it, it is within the law. John, we can talk later. I, I, I ain't hearing too clear when I'm driving, so. Yeah. So we gotta look at the frontline workers. We gotta look at you know something like put time in mask because I dare somebody sneeze outside of the window. If you're driving, you know why you gotta tie your mask if you got your window down? If somebody sneeze outside there. Right? If somebody sneeze outside there now. Who else is this? I drive on a thing last week on the road. Hey, yeah, I gotta get this road between agriculture road and BV road. This bush, we don't. The thing just lashed me, me mirror there. Right? So I'm to the man there. So I'm telling y'all, y'all hearing me? No. We gotta look at this thing. I know government put aside, I think, a hundred fifty million dollar for frontline workers. Right? No, that a protest yesterday, Lyndon, and they want um, risk allowance. Not a bad thing to lobby for. And driving the old car, hard, hard, hard bike. If you mash brakes now, you ain't got brakes, partner. Come on, mashing the old car there. 
Jesus Christ. The man got old car, old tire plus he old and the man mashing like he mad. Like Guyanese is late for their own funeral. <laughs> you know that Guyanese is late for their own funeral. They're hurry for death. Yes, I'm telling you. We got to do an assessment and the next thing I want to talk about. I put it on the table, right? I put it on the table as it relates to Linden, how it come about. And the next thing we got to look at, did these people reach out to anybody? The authorities not paying attention to them. Who controls um, Region 10? Who controls the healthcare system in Region 10 and these payments and all these kind of things? Who controls that? Who's timing development in Region 10? Yeah, sir, we gotta look at them. But no matter what we're discussing, we nurses and doctors and lawyers gotta be taken care of properly if they gonna take care of we properly. And there's any way in this country. I ain't got time with where they there, what region they're in, or what they're doing. Well, you, I, I got time with what you're doing here. You gotta do your work, right? So that's the way they, 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 they protest and the health care and all them things. Um, next topic the police double standard across the country. I know Region 3, Commander Watts, Errol Watts, has been working strong. I, I, he's been going across Region 3, checking out all the stations, um, making sure everything is up to date. And They've been closing up shops and charging people and things. Region 6 yesterday, the police, they had a funeral at Babu Jan. And the police stood at the gate while people came and went to the funeral and went in. You know Babu Jan got a gate if you ever got Babu Jan. Babu Jan, by the way, is where um, Former President Jagan, Cherry Jagan, was laid to rest. This man again, again. Plus, the man like he wearing some big, big spectacles. The man has Seagull, who will carry all the wheels them twist up, and the man blazing. I tell you, the man laid three on funeral. Yeah, so that's where Babu Jan is where Farmer President um, Cherry Jagan was laid to rest. Now, the police stand up at the gate. Allow the people for coming. And then when the people have, when the people have come, ready for come out from the funeral, the cremation, I think it's a cremation. When the people are ready for come out, there's the police there with police van picking up people and carrying them a charger. <laughs> Man, where's the double standard? They had a big funeral in Buxton the other day. How you ain't got there? And I'm not saying leave anybody. I am saying deal with everybody equally. It must be a standard operational procedure of the Guyana Police Force to enforce COVID-19 public health ordinances. It should be standard across the board. Not more than 10 people at the funeral. Yes, sir. Right away. You are even given that certificate if you don't know how these people are buried. You understand? The police stand up at the gate. Let everybody for go inside. By the time the people are ready to come out, they got a police van there, the prison van waiting to collect them. Oh, Lord. I ain't easy, boy. I ain't easy. The police force cannot have double standards. If you're closing down shops, they must know six o'clock. When you warn one body one time, the next time you charge them. You get one warning, and then you charge the next time. And you make an occurrence. 
that you warn this person this time and this date their name and then you charge them the second time you're doing a great disservice as a member of the Guyana police force if you do not enforce the laws that not only cause difficulties and sicknesses in people's life, but death. When you allow a shop man to do what you do for taking money and allow you for the your business open, you are putting lives at risk. And the Guyana Police Force, members of the Guyana Police Force have to realize these are not normal circumstances. And I hear you know police get in charge of taking bribe as of recent. And they obviously gotta be taking bribe if shops can be open till 11 o'clock in the night. Y'all do y'all job. Do your job. When you take a bribe and got a man's shop open, when you turn a blind eye to groups of people on the road, you're putting people's lives at risk. You hear what I'm telling you? Eh? Moreover now, members of the Ghana Police Force need to do their work. Because you're, you're saving lives more than anything else. Yes, yeah, sir. But you can't want to take the bill of money and then go and tell them what to do. Is what going on here? They got accident here or is what really going on here? Or this is how the guy in his mentality is walk slow. Hello. Hi, Mr. Putin. Yes. Mr. Putin, good morning. I'm calling, I'm calling concerning the incident yesterday at Papa John. And when it was a poor beef, it had a crowd, even the ministers was crowding the police did anything. Why they only they only harassing Indian people when they go anywhere and not a racial person? I have received I ain't gonna say racial because I've received many complaints as such. Anytime Indian people have a crowd, the police walk in. But Africans could be at the crowd anywhere. Look what happened for me. Even today, minister was crowding the police just stand and look and what have done anything. Oh Lord. All right, all right. I got work. I highlighted I, I like talking about it and the double standards. Okay, thank See. you. Roger. And this is what it's looking like right now. This is what it's looking like right now. Yes, sir. It's like they could only come down for Indian people. That's what people are saying. It's a matter of fact. So, what should we got here? We got three car running. What you going on here? A set of vehicles running to one another. Everybody running one another back. Oh God. They're running. I time but the one with the whole car just now. Running God in heaven knows where they're going. I have to take your time now. When you crash up your car, how much days work does it take to money to fix that car? You try for a run for an hour. You try to run and excite yourself to save an hour. Yes, sir. How much days? No money you got to take back for fix this car. How much problems are you going to set back your life with your timing? Speed, they're going to look at other things, they're going to paying attention to the road, running to people back. Ay, 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 ay. When I ever land, <sighs> take your time for the road. Are you thinking about? <laughs> I don't want to get wicked this man. Are you thinking about Bamzi too much, man? This one in this country, I gotta get chastity belt. A man call me the idea, the man say he want to be me. I can't get it. I gotta get chastity belt. When a man go watch a man just someone sexually assaulted, there's not no easy thing. There's not no easy country you're living in. 
Jamaicans don't dip on them shipping the by Guyanese could never be like Jamaicans. Guyanese might be having the most homosexuals in the Caribbean, you never know. Them in easy? Guyanese in easy. Everybody wanna molest somebody, just a fun. Just a drive. Alright, so we had a nice morning. I got something for do. And I got a live coming up by 11 11. Talk to real interesting live. We got a robbery over the river. I gotta go over there here. We're going out with them people are highlighted. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. Follow the rules. Good dying every day soon. I'll be going across the country with the Ministry of Health highlighting the issues. People are dying from COVID-19 more than anything else. And people get more wild for the road. Very soon. In a collaborative effort with the Ministry of Health and the Guyana Police Force, I'll go across and we will highlight these issues and tell people what we expect of them. Just a constant reminder. Nothing like educating the people and reminding them, right? So you could look out for that very soon. Yeah, I'll take care. Look out for my interview on Gaisuku. What is going on? When it is going on? Why it is going on? When people can get jobs? When things can kick in? Look out for my interview today. I'll be at one of the estates today and you will have first-hand understanding of what is going on with the estates, when it's going to be on track and how we're moving forward. Right? You guys take care. Until then.